Hello and welcome everybody to the video. I'm your host, Info Guides or NFO Guides. For those of you that don't know me, I dabble in all sorts of different technology based things. In this video, we're going to discuss large bed 3D printer issues slash things that you must do if you are using a large bed printer. This is probably something that's also good to uh, do for any 3D printer, but specifically this issue arises for me in particular because I have a larger bed of a printer. Uh, and the printer that I have is an Anycubic Cobra Max 2. This guy right here. Okay, so I have one of these printers and I have no problems doing any kind of printing with it as long as they are small as far as the base goes like if the base of the print is like six inches by six inches no problems it, it works great love it but what i didn't do well i'm a 3d printer noob and what i didn't do has caused me some issues and we're going to go over that but first if you guys like this kind of content please like subscribe to my channel please subscribe it helps me out a lot i appreciate it and you also get any kind of updates that i do in the future first let me showcase the 3d prints that i've been i've got more but i'm going to showcase a few here that have had no issues whatsoever items like these yeah you know, no problem items like this we have no issues, you know, trying not to bump the mic here. You know, it's a working 3D printed screw holder. Um, no problem. The little test guys, no issues. A uh, little, uh, if you're a tech person, uh, NVMe hard drive holder. Simple, easy, no problems. So those are all are small as far as the base of them goes. Okay, so here you can see uh, on the print bed, I wanted to print, which again, I was showing you, I wanted to print four of these small guys and two large ones. So I laid them out on the print bed so that way I could get, you know, a lot of prints done all at once. And so now we get to show you the, the success of this print. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? That's exactly how it looked when I woke up in the morning. I hadn't touched anything yet. So what went wrong? Well, with large bed formatting, I, I'm saying this backwards. 3D printing with a large flat bed on your printer, it is much more imperative to go through a process of leveling the bed before you do these larger prints or use up more of that surface area. Before all those objects I showed you, I was printing right in the middle of the print bed and everything worked great. But as soon as I tried to lay out that whole screen of, you know, four small ones and two big ones. Basically what's happened is some areas of the bed, particularly the back left corner, it basically wasn't close enough to the print deck and it didn't stick at all. Basically in this back corner here, it didn't stick because this was too uh, low compared to the print head. And this corner of my bed is too high. Everything in the middle has no issues. Unfortunately, me being a noob to uh, 3D printing, what I purposely went with the Anycubic Cobra Max 2 Pro because it has automatic bed leveling. I thought, perfect, now I don't have to worry about it. No worries. Well, you can see. The ones that were touching the print bed seem to be mostly complete, whereas the back left corner is where we got a bunch of spaghetti. 
So this is me showing you what little I know. So here's the key, guys. Regardless of a printer saying it's got automatic bed leveling, if you're truly going to use the full area of that bed, you need to do the step I skipped. And that is ignore the fact that the printer can do its own bed leveling. It still can only do so much. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to kind of go over uh, the some pieces that I bought and I'm going to go through the process of leveling the bed on this. Uh, I'll apologize in advance. I'll be using a cell phone and uh, all that kind of stuff because, oh, let me get it right here. The printer is way down there at the other end of my man cave. The other end of my man cave is about 24 feet away. So, with it being 24 feet away, uh, the audio is going to be a little bit uh, worse, just like that last little piece from that other camera I had set up. It's going to be a little bit... Uh, you're going to hear a lot of background fan noises. This video is about, hopefully, preventing this problem. Okay, so here's the mess. And obviously, i got to clean this up. I'll do that off camera. But then, underneath the mess, oh, look at all the spaghetti here. We're going to lift off the magnetic lid. And what we got to do is we got to take out these flatbed bolts. There are six along this side, six along this side, two in the middle. Then we bought, so you can see it better, some little uh, silicone spacers. Right now they're solid metal spacers. So you can't uh, screw it tighter and get uh the bed to move they're just solid steel right now or metal um so we're going to replace all the spacers with silicone spacers but the silicone spacers let me put this in my hand so you can see these i had to 3d print some little uh, adapters as well that goes with these parts and so the little rings go in the top and the big ones are for the two middle screws. So like these here, the small ring will go in here. Just like that. And then for the middle ones, this is specific to the Anycubic Cobra Max 2. For the other ones here, we got these bigger ones here that are a little bit uh, thicker. So you can see here, they're a little bit thicker. Now, when we put these in, we want this piece down because the, the plate gets hot. We don't want this plastic to remelt. So we want those away from the print bed. So we have that. Now, once we replace those, we need a method to actually check uh, the depth on everything. So to do that, this costs a little bit of money, not terrible here. I bought a depth gauge. These are all recommended off of the internet. You can find videos about these uh, before mine. I'm just walking through the process so you can see how well this works out for me. I think this was about 15 bucks, not much. Another five bucks for those, um, the silicone pieces. Then I 3D printed this adapter here. And this adapter is going to clip onto the print head fan. It clips onto this side here just fine. Then we're going to take this gauge and we're going to clip it into that and then we'll lower the head down here and what we're going to do is we're going to put this down on the deck starting in the middle we'll zero the gauge 
And then without moving the print head, we'll move the bed back and forth this way and verify that we have as, as level as we can get it. And then once we get that done, then we'll move the print head left and right. So basically we'll hit the corners going across like this, across through here, all the way around, and we'll go from there. I've got all the screws out of the bed. And so now, oh, and I also pre-staged all my little silicone pieces. Again, the ones like this, with just a small piece, go along the edges with the 3D printed adapter down. The ones with the bigger piece will go in the middle with the 3D printed piece down. Right now, we're not worried about centering. All we're doing right now is we're going to gently lift this up, pull out the spacers. It may be hard for you to see them on the camera. Okay, so first, gently lift this up. Okay, you can see the spacers right here. That's this guy. The center one right here now this may prove a bigger challenge than i'm expecting i have no idea so there's the two center ones and then these outside ones here we're going to have this guy that guy then we got the same over here Make sure you drop things and lose parts. That is the best way to do anything. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to try our best to just gently lift this and ease it down. We're going to focus on the middle two first, but we want to try to get it on all of them at the same time. So we don't move them out of place. So we're going to start with this back guy and try to get him lined up first. I'm going to put the screw in and see if I can't cheat and get the silicone all oh, perfect. I think that's going to be the way to go. The silicone is tight enough to hold it in place. So I think we're going to try it this way, guys. We're going to put the screw through and do this on all of these and see if they'll stay in place. Okay, I'm going to find this last piece that I knocked on the floor and I'll come back once we have this bolted down and go on to the next step. Okay, we're back. Now, I spent quite a bit of time going through this, going over again and again and again. Kind of like a car tire, just kind of going around and constantly checking, rechecking, rebalancing, re resetting everything. You're not always going to get it to stay exactly at zero. Between the 3D printed gauge holder, there's a little bit of slop. But what I do want to point out is pay attention when you're trying to level the bed because if you put pressure on this bed, you will make that needle move. And in the same sense, if you put pressure on the print head in a downward motion, you're gonna make it move. Or if you lift it up or down or up. So just pay attention to when you're trying to line this stuff up, get yourself set and then try to be as gentle as possible and you want to stay, hopefully, within two marks of zero, positive or negative. And we're going to go to the front of the plate. And you can see we're deviating quite a bit there, but this is where it's hard to tell if I'm putting pressure on that plate. I don't know if this setting is good or not, 
but that's the process. But I'm going to go ahead and start doing some of the calibration prints and see how everything goes. Wish me luck. All right, hold up. Everything I was getting ready to show you with the calibration meter and all that kind of stuff, uh, yeah, didn't work for me. So, I used the same concept and just kind of uh, did my own way of calibration here, which probably would have worked from the beginning, but I saw a YouTube video saying to use a calibration meter. Didn't work for me, so this is what worked for me. I already removed this calibration print, so this is the calibration print. And basically what I did to get this to calibrate and get it right is I told it to print and as it was laying down the first lines I was watching it and if it looked like it was smearing it on the bed it was too close I would lift this up tighten it if it looked like it wasn't sticking down I would lift this up I would loosen it now that alone was getting me better results but there are still other piece that I did along that same process. Here's the other piece I was doing. So as I was doing a print, telling it to print, you hit your Z offset and I was adjusting my Z offset because constantly tightening and loosening the screws, I was getting close, but this here actually made it a lot easier than constantly tweaking all the screws. So I adjusted this setting and between this setting as well as adjusting the screws, I've got a nice calibration print. There you have it, guys. I went through this calibration. That's everything. I believe I've now got a calibrated print bed. You need to like, subscribe to my channel. I will give you future updates on how well this works on the next larger print I do. So stay tuned, keep in touch, and let me know what you guys are printing. Love to know. Peace.